Welcome to Behind the Business Podcast. Each week, I'll be sharing episodes taking you behind the scenes of industry-leading creative small businesses. We'll talk about the real-life, messy behind-the-scenes process of what it takes to build a successful business. Hopefully, each episode helps you combat the perception of perfection within our industry. I hope each episode encourages you to keep showing up no matter how imperfectly, so that you can make your own unique impact on this world. Grab a cup of coffee or wine and let's dive right in. Cheers. All right, so today I am walking you through how I use my Cultivate What Matters goal planner in my life and my business. Um, I have been using this since before I started my photography business and it has been so key and so instrumental to how quickly I've been able to grow. Um, And a lot of that I really attribute to this because it helps me really focus in and decide what it is that I want to make a lot of progress on throughout every single month um, and every single year. So I'm gonna walk you through this today. I'm super excited. This is actually my 2021 one. Um, And so I'm using my 2022 one actively and it's kind of underneath the camera. Um, But I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of just what is inside here. Um, You can get a detailed view of all of the actual pages if you go on their website, and I'll make sure that that's linked down below in the description. So the first part of this is what they call the prep work. Um, So that really just helps you evaluate kind of how this past year has gone um, and helps you really figure out what is the most important to you that you can really work on over the next year that is going to get you to the type of long-term success that you want. So instead of just thinking about this next year, The power sheets really help you take like a bird's eye perspective and figure out what's going to be important to you like 10, 30, and even like 50 years down the road. And so that you can use that and make sure that's like really intentional, really is purposeful and tied to your why to figure out what to do for the upcoming year. So they do have um, the first page is kind of like goal ideas. So I'll just jot down goal ideas that I have kind of towards the end of the like current year for the next year. Um, And so I kind of just keep this open with my like current power sheets towards the end of the year to write down any ideas of like things that I maybe want to change or the projects that I'm excited about for the upcoming year. And then from there, they have sections that are ask you a little bit about you and kind of help you figure out how do you do your best work because that's super important for setting up your goals in a way where you can do them in a way that feels really good to you. Um, So I always love checking into this. It's always a good reminder that I'm like really spurred on by like affirming words and that I don't do well under pressure and like is a good reminder for me in terms of like how I'm going to tackle all of my goals day to day. Um, And they have a section that has you list out things that like fire you up. So these are always like really fun activities and things that bring me like joy um, and life that I can always refer back to if I'm like, I feel like I need to incorporate more like creativity, joy or play into my daily routines. This is a really great list to um, just refer back to and make sure that I'm like sprinkling in these things throughout my year too, so that I'm like living a really fun and vibrant life. Um, this page is called their Cultivated Life Evaluation. So I really love this to help me think through, okay, like how did this past year actually go? It helps me think through, they have eight different categories here. Um, it has health, friends, finances, um, spiritual and personal growth, your spouse and or focal relationship is what they call it, Um, family, work, and recreation. So you can kind of just rate yourself one out of ten of how things went for the past year um, and then write just like journal through things for each section. And so I usually like write through, okay, like what how did this past year go in terms of that category? And are there things that I know that I actively want to change for this upcoming year? Um, And it's really fun because they help you, they like encourage you to pick out like two to three sections that you know you really want to focus on on the upcoming year. Um, So that's always really helpful for me. And I usually put like a sticker on those two to three places that I know I want to intentionally cultivate a little bit more in the upcoming year. And so then they go into a page that's called "There are Good Things and the Challenges. It's kind of what mine looks like filled out. Um, and it also has people you're grateful for and the lessons that you've learned. Um, this page is very, very beneficial for me to really think through, okay, the past year, like, what are some actual good things that worked really well that I want to make sure I keep doing? Or are there things that didn't work in the last year that I know I need to change? And so I love being able to like just brainstorm through these two categories. Um, And this is one page that I'll 
fill everything out kind of like in December, like towards the end of December. Um, usually that like last week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, but this is a page that I'll keep bookmarked and I'll like not try to do it all at once. I'll kind of come back to it and keep adding things because I'll remember things as I'm going through the rest of the pages. Um, so this is one that I kind of build on as I'm going through all of the prep work. Um, and then they have a section where they have you kind of write out any limiting beliefs that you have around yourself um, and help you reframe those to move past your fear um, and like say who you really are if you are able to break through those like barriers and those limiting beliefs that you have for yourself. And I think that's a great check-in to have every single year because there are all things that kind of will kind of like sneak back into your mind without you even realizing it throughout the course of the year and like having the space to like actively reframe that is so beneficial um so this is a page that I'll actually come back to and try to read throughout the year as well so I'm reminding myself that I am not limited by these like negative like things or like thoughts that are not really true about myself um and how I'm like just living out my day to day in my life and my business. So from there, they have you write through like what will have mattered in the big picture and kind of really define what the big picture is for you. Have you really defined what success looks like in the big picture and like years down the road? Um, and so it has you journal through like what will have mattered, what won't have mattered. And this is always like really good for me to like take like take a wider perspective on things um and then that you can journal out like who would you want to be like what would you want your legacy to have been like years and years down the road so that it helps you like think through that lens when you're creating your goals so that they are like tied to a deeper purpose and why and so from there you journal out what your cultivated year looks like this is a freeform page which can be really scary I think in the newer versions they have had it been like okay what's your big picture vision for like those eight categories and then how are you going to live that out this year in each of those eight categories I kind of like the freeform because I'm not tied to like the specific areas that you, they've had listed and I can write more on those like two to three areas that I really want to cultivate. Um, but this is something that I will like go through and read like pretty much every single morning to keep reminding myself of like, if I were living out my best year, what would that look like in an ideal scenario? So that's kind of what I write down on this page um, and refer back to. And then they have a yes and no list, which again is like very helpful to just gut check yourself in, um, make sure that you're really living intentionally and out of like your yes, more so than living out of like your no list um and then they have some more pages on yourself before they really dive into okay we're gonna write out like one or uh, write out what your like draft of your yearly goals are um and then have a vision board and I really like that they have like eight slots for your yearly goals um in the past I've had more business goals so I would have like six business goals and maybe two personal goals um over the past couple of more recent years it's been about three to four business goals for me and the rest is more personal. Um, I generally always have one that's like finance related that's kind of personal and business related for me. Um, and so that breakdown just changes depending on my season. Um, but I love that they have your goals just next to your vision board and you can choose kind of a word of the year that you're going to like help keep top of mind your goals. And so I... I love that section of things and then it kind of goes into breaking down your goals into action plans. Um, so in the past I would have like set a really big lofty goal and then broken it down into milestones and broken it into action steps and like given myself a deadline for each of those things. Um, but that's like a very rigid way of doing things and I would often burn out trying to do things that way because if I fell behind on an action step deadline, I would be like, well, there goes that. Like, that's the end of things. And I would feel like I'm always playing catch up. Um, but theirs is like a little bit more fluid in terms of how to like go about reaching your goals, which I have super appreciated. Um, I'm a very type A person, but sometimes I feel like I almost need to reel it in to be able to be creative and how I'm tackling my goals rather than setting myself to like one strict way of doing things. And if I don't do that perfectly, then it's like considered a failure in my mind. Um, so for their action plans, they have you list out um, just your yearly goal, your why, which is great to refer back to when you feel like you're stuck or in a rut with it. Um, they ask you what resources you need, um, what your goal aligns with, like so does it align with your big picture, does it align with what you're saying yes and no to, um, your word of the year. And then these boxes, this one says what success looks like for this goal at the end of this current year, um, what might happen if you don't make 
progress or don't start the goal? Who's affected positively by this goal? Um, and how will you help them along the way with this goal? And that is definitely not a question that I would have ever asked myself in the past, but it's so, so important to goal setting because your brain loves when you have like a positive experience and it'll do everything to keep repeating and having that positive experience in the process um, or having that positive experience in the future. So it's really important to have fun along the way um, and celebrate the little milestones. So from there, they have this page, which this one is filled up, as you can obviously see. Usually this is blank, blank space, which I really like. And then it has you set kind of like a mini milestone um, for Q1 or a mini goal, they call it, and then action steps. I don't always have like a milestone that I can like write out. And so usually it's just like an overall theme or encouraging words around what I want to remember in Q1 and then actual action steps underneath that. For this blank open space, this is the old way that I used to do it, but on my newer set of power sheets, I actually break that down into different sections. So I'll have one section at the top that says quarterly. So I'll write down all my quarterly action step ideas there. So if it's like a bigger project, that'll go under the quarterly section. Um, I'll have a monthly section. So something that I could like accomplish within a month, that'll go there. And then I have weekly and daily. So are there like some something that would maybe take a week to complete, I'll put it in that section so that I can refer back to that um, when I'm actually building out my tending list, which I will get to. So that's a little wrap on the actual prep work that they have you do at the beginning of the year or like before the year starts. Um, and then every single month is kind of just like a check-in. So they'll have a prepare well page that's broken out into important to do's, what you're excited for, what's on your mind, what you're hopeful that. For me, this is just a good place to like clear my mind and just get everything down on paper, cross out anything that isn't like actually going to matter or like just think through like, okay, like what is going to take my time and energy this month? Um, and then they actually have a monthly schedule. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is kind of what it looks like, the monthly schedule. Um, and so I usually write out like any shoots that I have, appointments that I have, um, weekly focuses that I have for the month. And that way I can kind of overview, see where my time is going to go every single month and then plan out when I'm going to make action towards my goals, like on days that and weeks that I actually have the space to do that um, so that I'm not overloading my plate. And then the right hand column, I actually use that. Um, this is an older way of using this, but I will list it one through 30 or 31 and write out dinner ideas for those dates. Um, so I actually use that for meal planning, not for goal planning at all. Um, and then they go into the next page, which is just like a brainstorm page that I don't really use that much. Um, I've broken my goals down in those action pages that I just mentioned. Um, so here it says you can brainstorm like monthly, weekly, and daily ideas. I don't really use that as much anymore. I kind of just list it as, or I kind of just keep that as a place where if I have like a random task that comes up, it doesn't have a specific due date or something. It's just like, oh, I should probably do this at some point. I'll write that there throughout the month. So yeah, I don't really use that space anymore, but I do use their tending list. Um, this is what I keep open on my desk every single day. Um, it's just a really good visual check-in of like, what am I going to spend my time and energy on this month? Um, so it starts out with, you can just write some encouraging words at the top, your priority for the month, and then it has you list out monthly action items, your weekly action items, and then your daily items and habits. Um, this one looks a little crazy because I like to make it fun with stickers and colors. But what I will do is I will list out my personal tasks from top to bottom on each of those sections and my business ones from bottom up. I used to have this flipped, but my brain will naturally want to spend more time and energy on my business. And sometimes my personal life is like what needs a little bit more love. So I've like flipped the way that I do that. Um, and then every single week they have something called Tending List Tuesday where you can check in on your goals. I usually do this on Fridays, like towards the end of the week um, to see like what all did I get done? Um, do I need to add something to my planner for this upcoming week that I want to work on? And the daily stuff, the daily habits I try to check in with every single day at the end of my work day. And so that's a little bit of how I use my goal planner. They do have a page that is just like your month in review, which I'll do at the end of the month and then right before I set up my tending list for the next month. And so it has you just journal through like people you're grateful for and why, what goals you made progress on, what you read or listened to. I'll write down like fun purchases that I made there as well. Favorite memories, what you're choosing grace over guilt about, 
what you're saying no to, what you're saying yes to. I used to actually only do this and try to fill it out at the end of the month, but now I try to fill out a little bit each week because at the end of the month, I really won't remember what like three weeks ago looked like. Yeah, that's a comprehensive review of how I use this thing. It's been so helpful to help me like figure out what I want to focus on every single year. And then they do have a fun part now at the end of the year where you can just like go back and list out like favorite memory, best thing you read or listened to, stuff like that. So it's always like a great way of like being able to really look back on the year in an intentional and fun way. So that's how I use them. If you have any questions at all, be sure to drop a comment down below and I will respond there. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so that you can see my videos. They come out every single Monday and are also in podcast form as well. And I hope I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a great one. If you loved this episode, be sure to check out my free masterclass for photographers to help you book out your wedding photography business this upcoming year. I chat through three key tips that you can start implementing today to confidently raise your prices and book this dreamy client. You can sign up at manaliphotography.com slash class, C-L-A-S-S. -S. I'll see you inside.